So, Shalom, sisters, this is Yalan, and um, today we're just going to be going over, you know, um, gluttony. So, a lot of us deal with gluttony, including myself, and I just wanted to share um, some scriptures that I went over and something that I think um, will help me if I talk about it more. You know, um, if I make it apparent that this is a um, spirit that I am battling, like everything that you battle, you don't want to battle by yourself. You don't want to battle it quietly. You want to take that thing to the Lord. And I was talking to my sister yesterday and she was saying, like, we're always going to battle something in this spirit. I mean, in this flesh, like whether you get over um you start something, um, you kill that spirit or whatever, it's always going to be something else. So is it not about, you know, that you're not going to have struggles in this flesh? It's about um, how you deal with those struggles. Like, are you bringing it to the Father? Are you praying and fasting? Are you saying, get behind me, Satan? So this is something that I decided to um, do a while ago and I didn't stick to it so I'm sticking to it now right now doing something about it so um yeah that's it who you talking to me huh okay alright so so, um, what I did was a while back, I got a lot of scriptures and I, um, put them into little cards, went to Canva and got scriptures and put it into cards or whatever. And these scriptures are dealing with, um, gluttony. All right. And then what I did was. On another card, I wrote scriptures down. And when it has an asterisk right here, just because it's in the apostrophe. But I wrote scriptures down and um, yeah, I was gonna match them up. It was gonna be like a little matching game or whatever. We did it once, but it really didn't stick. You know what I mean? So right now what I'm doing is, I'm, I just got on the third one. What I'm doing is matching them up, and I'm actually using some glue to stick it together so I don't have to, you know, be like playing a game. I can just, you know, learn my scriptures like that. I think that memorizing scriptures really does help um, with the battles we face. And yeah, girl, I done lost like four pounds already, so. I'm like, look, I'm going to keep this up. And I had like a health scare. A tick bit me in my head. And it was just a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the video. And after if you guys want to talk, let me know in the comments. And we can talk about whatever. All right. So the first one that I'm doing is <clears throat> Ecclesiasticus. Well, the first one that I did is Ecclesiasticus 31 and 20. And it says, sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. He rises early and his wits are within him. But the pain of watching and choler and the pangs of the belly are with an unsatable man. So um, unsatable, that means like a person that is like really just uh full like your your body like you don't have how can i say it? i think unsatiable is like full really it's just like lethargic um yeah like you just feeling like you know not yourself not your light self when you do fast or whatever you do All right so so it says sound sleep come of moderate eating and I can attest to that like every time I um, eat in moderation or I don't eat you know a lot that night I wake up and I feel good like I wake up I just say this morning I woke up I 
went outside, I fed the chickens, and I came back in, I did my workout, and I was like, oh, you know what, let me go ahead and get into my Bible. That's what, um, you know, modern eating does. It makes you wake up feeling good. And it says, but the pain of watching and colder and the pains of the belly are what the unsatable man. Now, I know that for a fact. If I go to sleep and I eat good, now I mean, I mean, not good, I eat bad. Let's say it like that. And I ate bad. I would like wake up, stomach hurt, not want to do anything, just pull myself out of bed, just uh, uh, what's in there to eat. Like, you know, like I would be like that. And I just love how the most high just be bringing the truth. Like he knows, like he knows what he knows and he knows what he knows. So like, why wouldn't we follow, you know, the instructions that he gave us? So um, I like that one. That's Ecclesiasticus 31 and 20. And then we have already did this one as well. First Timothy 4 and 8. If you guys want to go to the scriptures, you guys can. If not, I'm reading it right here. It says, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. Hallelujah. So, um, it's crazy too because when I was just doing my Pilates, I was like, you know, bodily exercise profited little, but I'm going to still do it though. But it don't profit as much as godliness. Now, we know that gluttony is a sin that can kill and it will kill you if it gets hold of you. It's going to cause diseases, discomfort. Um, sometimes it causes overeating where the heart just get blocked. Like it just, it will kill you. It's a spirit that's out to kill you. So um, if you have godliness, that means you have self-control. That means you are, you are practicing the fruits of the spirit, right? So um, godliness will give you self-control if you are practicing things that is profitable to you, like um, mod eating in moderation, like not making your your uh, belly your god um things of that sort that basically i mean that is um yeah that's that's what practicing godliness is and we all know that exercise is only 20 percent of weight loss 80 percent of weight loss is what you put in your body how you feed in your organs um, what what are you drinking? What kind of fluids are you putting in your body? Are you getting your herbs in? Are you getting your teas? Like, are you doing that? And if you are doing that, you probably don't even have to exercise. You know what I mean? Um, if you're doing godly, if you're practicing godliness, you are cleaning up. You are taking care of your children, and that could be your exercise. So, I really love this one too. I mean, I really love all of these. It's giving like, thank you, Lord. Like, I love Him so much. So it says, for bodily exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is. So once we practice godliness, um, we can start to uh, reap the benefits and um, start to see the promises of, you know, this life. The promises, some promises of this life can be um, long a, a long healthy life it can be able to it could be being able to see your grandchildren your your great grandchildren um to see your legacy it can be able to see the blessings of yahweh um the blessings of yahweh shy um just being able to just be lively and be you know they say health is wealth being able to be wealthy you know, being able to see the fruits of your labor because we all know that Hashitan is trying to kill you before you even, you know, before you even get to gather your fruits, right? So I really love that. And it says, the, the other thing that I love, it says, and of that which is to come. So that is which to come is everlasting life, right? So if you're, we already know if you're not practicing um, righteousness if you're not practicing 
godliness, you're not going to be have the promises of everlasting life. You will not be in the kingdom of the Most High. You will be in the lake of fire. So we know that um, all of this is true. I mean, it's not that we know we know it's not true. It's just like I love to. I want to keep hearing it, and I love that um, that He put it in there for us. Like, cause He didn't have to. He could have made it a game and told us, you know, it's no instructions. And we all know with every game, we need instructions. What we're going to be making about on, we're going to be making mistakes. But he gave us the instructions of life. He gave us the instructions for every problem, for every spirit that's out here. He gave us everything that we need. So all we got to do is practice self-control, practice discipline. And we know that, going back to the last one, it starts with moderate eating because... That's what starts your day. And how you start your day is, you know, everything. All right. And the second, the last one that I did before I um, finish them up, because I got a lot to do. But I'm just, you know, I'm just going to make this video short. But the last one I did is, is Proverbs 23, 20 through 21. It is, be not among wine members, among righteous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hallelujah. And that is Proverbs 23, 20 through 21. So it says, be not among wine members, among righteous eaters of flesh. Um, when it talks about be not among wine bibbers, we know that Mashiach, he had some wine in his cup or whatever. And so, and we were supposed to be among him, right? We know that they do eat flesh. They did eat flesh. And, um, you know, back in the day, our ancestors, they ate flesh or whatever. But they, did, they didn't modestly. They did it righteously. They did it um, with control, with self-control. So this is not telling you don't be around people that drink and don't be around people that eat meat. It's telling you to don't be around um, riotous, right? Riotous, riotous. So maybe like, like y'all know when y'all be watching uh, kosher cartoons. If y'all don't watch kosher cartoons or y'all don't let y'all children watch, watch kosher cartoons, that's my stuff. But when they be eating, they just in the background like don't be around people that you know drinking 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 eating 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 like you we already know in the black community as soon as we have um anything we go on all you can eat like all you can eat was all you can eat all you can eat and that was not good like that's not good um and then maybe if you do go like you're not about to keep getting five and six plates like, don't be around those people because they're going to influence you. Don't be those people because you're going to influence them. You're going to, you know, bring on disease. You're going to bring on a lot of famine. Yeah, you can bring on that for yourself. It could be like a, a spiritual famine for you in your household. Because if you are sitting there eating everything up um, by the end of the month or when your money is all gone, your household is just experiencing a small portion of famine because you guys have nothing. Because you're a riotous eater of flesh. You you not um, you know growing your 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 vegetables and stuff that you can eat. You're just eating the main or you're just eating. I mean, I guess. So and then it says for the drunkard and the glutton. So we know that. Um, he's not talking about regular wine bearers and regular eaters of flesh. He's talking about the drunkard and the glutton. It said the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Just like I said, poverty. Like you spending all your food, on, your, your money on food. You spending all your money on, you know, liquor. You don't come to poverty. You don't start spending your your light bill, you're going to start spending your um, mortgage. You know what I mean? 
on things that don't profit you, right? So if you have a budget, talking to myself, if you have a budget for your food each month, stick to it. And if you run out, oh well, oh well. Eat moderately, like, there's nothing else to do, like, for real. Because that is um, called self-control, having a, a meal plan, having actually meal prepping, right? And it says, in drowsiness, she'll clothe a man with the rags. So we know once you eat a lot, what they call it, the itis, yeah, you ain't gonna wanna go to work all the time. You ain't gonna wanna wake up and um, actually work on your business. You're not gonna wanna, um, you know, go out and just create income for yourself. So you, because you're feeling this unstable feeling, you're feeling this, oh, I'm tired, I don't feel like it, you know? So, yeah, I really enjoyed these three, so I decided to hop on a video and share it. I'm actually going to upload it right now, so I won't have to edit it and all this stuff, because that's I think that's what was holding me back, so I'll go ahead and upload it, but I really enjoyed, you know, making these. If you guys want um, a copy of these, I can send them out. It's gonna you're gonna have to print it out and cut them, and then glue them together. Um, but it's a game as well. It's called um, I can't say it. It's called scripts over lips, and then it's gluttony, right? So of course I'll have other um, words, but basically it's saying that we need to have these scriptures. You know, over talking, like bring the scriptures out. I know you you want to keep talking about it, but what the scriptures say? The scriptures is going to tell the truth. You know, so um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for coming on this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and subscribe. I am going to start um, making videos. It's going to be a wide range because I am a, a wide range person. Like I'm a diamond. My name is Diamond. I'm I shine different directions. I have, you know, I'm, I'm a very, um, um, I, I'm just a multi-talented person and I'm trying to, you know, just do all of it, right? So I praise the most high for his life. Um, praise the most high for his breath that he gave me for this life. Um, and I praise the most high for his word. I love him so much for keeping me and keeping my family and, and getting me back on the right um, track um, and I just love you guys for you know being able to click on this video knowing that maybe you're dealing with the same thing you're actually making a change so hallelujah for that all right and I'll see you guys later bye bye see y'all